All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Inline Balutes, which is being made by forum user Ryo Crockite. And what this glorious little parts pack looks to add into the game is a series of different sized balutes for you to add to your craft. And don't worry if you don't know what a balut is, they're not exactly the most common thing in the universe, but uh, essentially they're a mix between a parachute and a balloon, and they're really good at slowing down objects. Uh, like in the actual real world, the predominant user of balutes is actually the military. They tend to use them at the back of bombs so that when they release from the airplane, they slow down really quick to get that nice vertical drop. Uh, and in terms of space, uh, the idea is to use balutes as a method of uh, arrow breaking your ship in the upper atmosphere, as well as an alternative to heat shields. Now, we'll talk all about that more here in a little bit, but let's uh, jump right on into the space plane hangar and take a look at the parts that we do get with this mod. Now, as usual, let's grab the Mark I command pod for size comparison and uh, then head on down to the utility tab where you will find the four different balutes that get added in by this mod. Now, the first one is the Pinata Balut, which is at a 1.25 size, and it's good for vessels up to 15 tons. So we have four different sizes of balutes here, and each one has its own sort of uh, vessel size rating. So this one will hold up to a 15 ton, or be able to be used with up to a 15 ton craft. The next one is in the 2.5 meter size, the Swimming Duck, which is good for a 30 ton craft craft. We then have the 3.75 Glowing Star, which is good for a 60 ton craft. And finally, we have the Super Size Me 5 meter variety balut, which can hold up to an 80 ton craft. So yeah, if you've got a really really big ship this is this is the one you'll need but yes these are the different balutes now sadly you can see that there is a lot more detail here which unfortunately we cannot see here in the uh vehicle assembly building we'll have to actually go out and launch one at the launch pad in a moment to actually see all the nice detailing on the inside but as for the exterior very nice modeling on it the texturing could use a little bit of work in places mainly these rivets up at the top since it's the same uh, texture over and over you just see the degradation and the quality as it goes down I mean you look up at the top it's quite nice clear rivets but then they just kind of get pixelated as you go down that's that's really my only complaint as for the look of this thing on the exterior the interiors are gorgeous which again we'll see those in a moment now you'll notice when we right click you have similar options to uh, when you have say a parachute which let's Grab one for comparison there. So similar sort of things, your minimum pressure and altitude at which to release. Uh, but this, the altitude is a bit, um, hmm, screwy, shall we say? Because uh, it's very different depending on where you're using it, of course. As it's, uh, these are designed to be released in the upper atmosphere. So it really just all depends on which planetary body you're on uh, for where that'll actually be the most effective. Uh, but yes, it's it's quite a fun little, little object here. All in line, of course, we have none that are radial in nature and you'll, uh, you'll see why momentarily when we see the actual released version of this. So let's actually grab a craft that I made earlier. Don't save. That's just a really, really crappy quick balut test. It's basically just a big Mark 1-2 command pod, a couple of the balutes, well, all the different sizes of balutes, and a small little, small little engine there. Just, uh, just a tiny little mammoth, <laughs> nothing too big. And let's go to launch that and uh, take a look at what the balutes look like when released. And of course, the interior of the actual uh, balut casing. So let's just turn on the SAS real quick, throttle up. I also just realized I forgot to set staging. I'm really glad I looked at that before I hit spacebar. So let's go. And we're gonna go up until about halfway on our fuel just so that we get a decent amount of altitude. There we go, throttled down nicely. 
and release our balutes once we slow a bit and stop going upwards or else it's gonna, you know, start flipping around the ship as it uh, tends to do with parachutes as well. Because of course it runs off of the same sort of physics system that the parachutes do. Yeah, we're still going up but it's slow enough now so let us hit spacebar and release all the balutes. There we go, beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have a series of different sized donuts, and I love them. Beautiful modeling on it, beautiful texturing, a bit hard to see because of the sun's position right now because it's directly above us, uh, but at the top we have just a sort of basic texture, but on the sides you get the much nicer, more detailed texture, which I guess you could kind of consider the balutes heat shield of sorts, but very, very cool design to them. I do like the sort of half and half nature of the more textured bottom with the smoother top. Very nice indeed. Beautiful modeling to them. Again, just a lovely series of donuts, essentially. And I, I love all the cabling because of the massive size of these different balutes. You'd really need the cabling to properly winch them back and forth, because these are un or, uh, repackable, just like parachutes are. And if we go down here to one of these released sections, oh, just look at how beautiful this is in there. You've got the... Uh, Lovely little canisters of gas that, well, the liquid gas that will then uh, be, get pumped into the balloon to actually inflate it. We have the winches here for the cabling. All just a, just a beautiful design in there. We've even got the little danger high pressure sign. I love it. Very good little attention to detail. Just a beautiful design to the interior of these. I really wish you could see them uh, a bit better in the VAB. But, oh well, we're out here now and you can see them in all of their glory and of course again the different sizes now I'm a little little weirded out by the sort of uh, oh god how would I even put it I guess the spacing between them I mean this smallest one and then the medium one and then this one here all seem to be fairly going out at a, the sort of the same gap between them but then the largest one just it seems to be engulfing the second largest <laughs> uh, yes it is good now as to a slight explanation of how these balutes are supposed to work they're not really meant to be a replacement for a parachute or really a replacement for a heat shield the idea though for them is say for returning to Kerbin here is as an aid to landing so if you have a powered craft these would work similar to a drudge chute but a drudge chute will eventually sort of collapse on itself the closer you get to the ground whereas these stay pretty much up and at them until you are landed because of course they are gas filled balloons and so they're not really meant to replace the parachutes per se they'll slow you down very nicely which right now we have four different balutes in varying sizes so we're slowing down a hell of a lot more than we really should be if we just had one that has been released now uh as for when you release these in upper atmosphere which is the main intention for it being an alternative to heat shields uh, the idea being that you release this in the upper atmosphere, it slows your descent as you're coming into the upper atmosphere, which makes sure that you don't really get up to that sort of mm, high velocity that would start to cause the heat damage to the ship. And because of that, you can make wider ships. Now, typically, if you had a standard heat shield, you would basically have to build your lander inside the radius of that heat shield and that heat shield would protect it with these balutes on the other hand you can have a much wider lander that would go normally be spilling out the sides of a heat shield so you can build larger landers with using these balutes and keeping that lander safe from heat damage and one interesting part about their deceleration of physics to them, uh, when you first release them in the upper atmosphere, they don't decelerate you quite as quickly, but as you go more and more into the atmosphere, it decelerates you more and more quickly. So by the time you get down towards the ground, you should be going at a pretty, pretty slow-ish pace so that you could easily land assisted with engines. Uh, but of course, if you did want to, you could cut the balutes and then finish the rest of the way with normal parachutes if you so desire but that that's basically how they work so let's actually go and see it in practice now I built this one just kind of to show them off and explain things a little bit and now 
let's go to the space center. Yes, leave anyways. And over to the tracking station where I have put a super heavy lander, one of the basic designs that the game comes with, in orbit around uh, Duna. I almost said Mars there. I always do that with Duna. And yes, we have this baby set up with a balut, the two point... Ooh, no, yeah, you hold on, hold on a moment. Yes, the 2.5 meter variety. I had to think about that for a second. I'd forgotten if I'd put on the 2.5 or larger or smaller. But yes, yeah, oh, it is the 1.25. Okay, so we have the 1.25 balut. I apologize for forgetting that. I couldn't remember if I built it with the balut there or there. But this 1.25 meter balut should be more than enough for slowing down this craft. Now... We can't slow it down at the moment because we're still in space. The balut would be essentially useless. You have to be in the upper atmosphere for it to work. So let's actually uh, accelerate time a little bit so we get a slightly better sunlight for this uh, deceleration mission. There we go, that should be good. And rather than wasting time burning... Oh god, I also realized my staging on here is bad too. I really need to remember to do my staging, folks. Let's do that. Beautiful, sorted. So I'm just going to change our orbit. And the atmosphere, I believe, on Duna, if I'm remembering correctly, starts at about 45,000. Yes, there we go. Beautiful. So, we should now be able... Activate our engines there briefly, and then release the balut. There we go, it inflated and is now starting to slow us down. But again, as I said, when you're up in the upper atmosphere, it's very slow to decelerate. So we're only losing 0.1 of a meter per second, roughly every second. So it's, it's not really the greatest of deceleration for now, but it will help us bring down our periapsis on the orbit, so we will start to move our landing position. And we can also see the better texturing on here. Let's turn off the overlay here for a moment, and just look at that glorious texturing on this thing. Oh, I love it to death. It's just so beautiful. So, so very beautiful. That, that, my friends, is a balut. And just as a quick little side note for the real world, there hasn't actually been much testing on balutes in the real world in space, but they've got a lot of cool ideas for them, including using them to, uh, as a method of deorbiting microsatellites. So you release the balut and it'll start to get the atmospheric pressure uh, to slow it down and it'll slowly descend into orbit and or out of orbit rather and then burn up in the atmosphere. Good times, good times. So it could be an interesting way of cleaning up space, uh, perhaps, maybe. But let's bring back up our UI. Still pretty uh, decelerating slowly there. Let's speed up time a bit to 4x and you'll start to see it tick up more and more quickly as we lose altitude. Now how are we actually looking on the map? Oh my, we are still actually technically going, technically going to orbit. Let's give it a little help. <laughs> there we go, bringing the engines to drop our orbit down even further. Our poor little balutes freaking out a little bit because of course we're at four times normal time at the moment so <laughs> but there we go we are getting a nice little ex or deceleration now it's going at quite a good clip with uh, just the balut as I've turned the engines off now and we should be yes dropping in our orbit quite nicely beautiful and so this actually could be an interesting way for arrow breaking your ship when you're flying by in space. So if you're going to kind of be at a close call with Duna, as long as you get it just right at the end to skim the upper atmosphere, you could use it for arrow breaking maneuvers, which would be quite fun. Let's actually bring it back down to normal time at the moment. And there we go. We are decelerating still quite nicely. Jebediah, good smile in his face. Bob, looking... Looking a little unhappy. <laughs> uh, but doesn't Bob always? Bill seems rather indifferent at the moment. Hmm. Good for him. I think he's getting too used to Jebediah. 
All right. Now, we still may need a little bit of engine assistance in this landing because we are starting to get quite close to the ground now, and we're only down to roughly 200 meters per second. Uh, again, that is, a, you know, like I said earlier, the balut isn't the end-all be-all to landing. It is really meant to be engine-assisted or potentially using parachutes as well. It's a way to slow you down so you don't run into the heat effects as you come into the atmosphere. So your ship is nice, safe, and sound. Oh boy, oh, more speed. Oh, we crashed and blew up. <laughs> uh, yeah, if I was a better pilot, we would have been fine. I wasn't paying as much attention to the uh, altitude as I probably should have. Instead, was explaining the mod. But yes, the real purpose of it, as I mentioned, is to make it yourself through the atmosphere so that you don't have to deal with heat shields. And then once you're closer to the ground, actually, you know, use your engines or parachutes, unlike myself so that you can actually land your ship but yes that is uh really it for this mod if you would like to check out the inline balutes for yourself you can uh, have a gander at the link in the description as always and if you make any cool landers using these balutes i would love to see them and see how you guys make it through the atmosphere with those large unwieldy crafts being uh you know kept safe by your large balutes and yeah just tweet me a pic of those and i hope you have enjoyed this episode today and of course that you do come back for the next but until then thank you for watching my friends oh there's the flight results and as always have a good one